Hello friends, this video on electrochemistry part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay. Why? What happened? So it started in 1663, a German physicist, he created first electric generator. He created the first electric generator and it was based on friction. So 1663 before 1663 there was no more electricity at all right 1663 this guy german physicist otto von urich he created electric generator and they produced static current it produced static current by applying friction the next was since 1785 this guy charles e coulomb he developed the law of electrostatic attraction And we will discuss this laws actually. And then in 1771 actually, a doctor, please note he was a doctor, he was not even a chemist or he was not even a physicist. But the doctor, and his name was Galvani, he marked the birth of electrochemistry. And that's why he is called father of electrochemistry. He was the guy who gave the birth to electrochemistry. He was the one who established the bridge between the chemical reaction and the electricity. If you see electrochemistry is nothing but this is the chemistry and this electricity. Right? So he was the one who established the bridge between chemistry and electricity. How he did that? He did that incidentally, actually. He is the guy, Dr. Galvani. And what funny thing happened was one fine day when this uh, when Galvani was cutting a frog leg you see this is the frog leg which he was trying to eat right and he was using the steel scalpel this steel scalpel touched the brass hook and this brass hook was actually holding the leg piece this can happen right when you eat uh, this frog and this frog is generally in the brass hook when you're trying to cut he was trying to cut with the steel scalpel the funny thing happened was the leg of this dead frog twist right this is the dead frog the leg of this dead frog twist so he did the experiment once again he took different two different metals right for example he has steel and brass so he took two different metals zinc silver i mean this it has to be two different metals and the moment you touch in a dead frog the leg twist and it was a little strange right why did the leg twist so this guy thought there is something called animal energy animal electricity actually so he coined a term called animal electricity because he was a doctor he knew more about the animals so he told okay there is something called animal electricity and that was the reason why this frog is the leg is twist Correct. So the funny thing happened was, let me uh, explain once again, when he was eating this frog, dead frog, and this was a brass and was a steel he was trying to cut, and this jumped, actually, not jumped, I can say, the leg twist. He performed the experiment again in the lab with two different metals, and he saw that the, log, the leg twist. And nobody knew from where, why this leg twist. So he coined the term called animal electricity, in fact a different branch of chemistry altogether where you talk about the electricity in animals, right? So he thought, he thought that is the reason why the leg is getting twist. But this guy Volta, he believed that this whole ex experiment, it happened not because of animal electricity. He told there is nothing called animal electricity. This happened because of the metals. This happened because of the metals. So he, what he proved that if you are using same metal, let's suppose two steel metal, the leg won't stitch. If you are using two silver, Right, both silver, the leg won't twitch or the leg won't shake. Right, the frog, the dead frog's leg will shake only if you use two different metals. That was he proved, but he wanted to prove that in a more concrete way. Right, he was very much determined now. He knew something is going wrong here. Right, if you use two different metals, some electricity is coming out because of the electricity only this frog is shaking its leg the dead drop so he was determined to find the electricity using 
the combination of two different metals, right? It was two different metals. So what he did was, he, he did a lot of experiments. And as I told, he found that it was two dissimilar metals and not that, not the frog leg actually that produced electricity because there was electricity here, there was no doubt in that. But it was two different metals, not something which is there in, in the animal. So he was saying that there is nothing called animal electricity. It was two different metals that produced electricity, right? And he was telling that the frog leg was just indicator of the presence of electricity. The frog leg was nothing but indicator that there is electricity, correct? To prove it, to prove it, he, he built the first battery. He built the first battery and that battery is called voltaic pile, right? Because he, he wanted to just prove his theory. To prove that, he, pre, he created something called voltaic pile. So let me explain you what is voltaic pile. I mean, I'll explain that voltaic pile in uh, next few slides. Let's understand what happened after that. And also note that uh, since this guy Volta was very uh, popular actually because he was the guy who created the first battery, right? The SI unit of battery, SI unit of current, if you see, is volts, right? The battery, SI unit of battery actually. It is in volts, 1.5 volt, 2 volt like that. So this volt is nothing but in the name of Volta. Correct. So after that, I'll just continue the history and then we'll discuss the voltaic pile. So the history continued. And uh, in 1800s, these people were, uh, they, they succeeded in producing uh, what you, or they succeeded in decomposing water. So they did the electrolysis of water, right? They did the hydrolysis of water actually. And then soon after that, this guy Ritter, he discovered the process of electroplating, where you have one metal, for example, if you see copper, there is some other cheap metal and this is electroplated with copper. And then uh, Faraday gave the law of electrochemistry. We'll discuss the Faraday law also. And then this John Daniel in 1836, he invented the primary cell. So the earlier issue with the voltaic pile which I'll explain you was the hydrogen gas was uh, bubbled actually and that leads to polarization of battery I'll tell you what is polarization of battery right polarization of battery and because of the polarization of battery the battery doesn't I mean it it doesn't work after some time so it had very less efficiency so he eliminated this hydrogen gas in his uh, setup we'll explain this uh, Daniel cell also and then we have this uh, William Groove. He produced the first fuel cell in 1839. So that's all we have for the history. And then uh, this guy came in 1888 to give the Nernst equation. So if you see, in all this uh, cell, other cell I've discussed, they used to take one molar concentration of all the electrolytes. So this guy came up with a relation right on uh, what happens if you take two moles of electrolyte or three moles of electrolyte there has to be some relation in the volts so he came up with this nasty equation we'll discuss this also right as i told let's discuss the volt voltaic pile first so voltaic pile was the first battery which was um, which could continuously provide electric current to a circuit right so he believed as i told he believed that the electricity came from the contact tension between two metals so he chose two metals rod he he chose two metals plate actually instead of rod if you see they have there are n number of metal uh, plates here why because he he thought that the electricity came because of the contact tension so if you see what he did was so this voltaic pile was invented by alexander volta in 100 and wh why it happened was as i just explained that so this galvani this dr galvani he discovered that uh, while eating frog, uh, he, he, he saw that this leg twist and then experimentally he proved that the dead frog, if you use two different metals, the leg twist. So he was excited with this experiment, but he confronted Dr. Galvani. Dr. Galvani told that there is something called animal electricity inside the frog, but he confronted saying that there is something in the metal which produces electricity, right? So just to prove his theory, what he did was he 
created this voltaic pile and to do that what he did was he demonstrated that when two metals and the brine soak cloth brine is nothing but by sodium chloride right salty yeah. water that is arranged in the circuit they produce electricity and they arrange in this pattern and just to just he believed that the electricity is coming from contact tension between uh, two metals he didn't use rods right he used plates if you see they are all plates like this he used so many plates so many plates metal plates and he used actually zinc and silver zinc and silver plates and if you see the he has piled up these plates in this pattern so this is a metal metal one this is a cloth and there's a metal two again there is a metal one there's a cloth and then a metal two and like this it continued right and this cloth is nothing but the leather which is made wet or using the brine solution now what happened was if you connect this guy and this guy the electricity was produced if you see this guy and this guy if you connect it produced electricity so the reaction that took place was for example this is my zinc so at zinc what was to happen was zinc used to get oxidized to zn2 plus and two electrons were emitted because zinc is more stable in plus 2 form we'll really explain this uh when we talk about the reduction potentials so zinc used to get oxidized and here at silver so we have silver and we have let's say hydrogen so in this case at this metal two point what will happen is my hydrogen plus will get take the electron to form hydrogen gas so if you see oxidation reduction both are happening here right and with this the current will pass we will we'll understand more about this when we talk about the daniel cell but there was a limitation was the first limitation was that the hydrogen gas was produced at cathode so at this point at this all is red right all the hydrogen gas was produced right and there is a limitation to the number of plate because if you increase the number of plates so this is uh, a uh, soaked uh, leather or show cloth will squeeze and that is not good and the third limitation was the plates used to get rusted easily so rusting a plate was issue there were so there were three concern one was the hydrogen gas so it 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 causes polarization so because of hydrogen gas the battery used to stop working and then uh, after a, maybe one or two hours and the limitation the number of plates and you, you can't have a, a number of plates you, because the number the moment you increase the plate this uh, so cloth or leather used to squeeze and this plates used to rust easily so there were three limitations to this voltaic pile so we see at zinc we have more electrons and at this metal maybe silver this is a silver red one is a silver at this we have less electrons correct so at this we have less electrons so zinc has more electrons this has less less electrons so if you connect this by a circuit the electrons will flow from here to here and thus you will generate electricity it's a very simple logic zinc has more electrons zinc plates so silver will have less electrons so we connect the plate the electrons will flow from zinc to silver and the current will flow in reverse direction but there was a issue with one was the hydrogen gas was the issue the rusting of plate was the issue and the third issue was the number of plates so the volt uh, you can have much number of uh, huge volt the number of plates was the issue there was a cap to the number of plates thank you visit examfi.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again